Okay, so we've already took a look at the phrasing and the harmony of our mix and the tracks involved. Now we'll be actually taking a look at the actual mix itself. Uh, by that what I mean performing the mix. Um, like I say we've already talked about phrasing so we'll we'll hope that we put in that into practice and the harmony we're putting that into practice as well. And now we'll be going over the various things while we're actually performing the mix on the mixer and the various little nuances in and out on using the various knobs and sliders as we perform the mix. And we'll take a look at it. Okay, when it comes to starting a mix or a set, as some people like to call it, you want to try and find out a track that seems to be a good track to start the set with, as a good sense of starting to it. Um, there might be a long build up, um, a beatless intro, you'll get the gist uh, kind of thing. Some people tend to build their own intros and their own outros to set because so they can just suddenly stop any um, the intro and put the beat of any track in at the end of that uh, but it's nice to try and get your own track with a nice feel to start the set itself also try and find a track that's good when it comes to finishing the set whether that's that, whether it, the finish of the track itself is gives a very good feel uh, of coming to a conclusion, or whether it goes out on a high, real high energy, uh, and then burns out um, is another way to do it. Um, you kind of get the feel for those tracks after a while, but they kind it kind of adds um, a dynamicness to the set itself. If you can find a track that starts well, it kind of it's it's kind of kind of adds to the um, the atmosphere of the situation. Okay, so we've previously talked about the fact that we use our master level when we're blending and. If not, we're using the crossfader. Obviously, we set the crossfader up using the master level to get that right, so we don't peak in the middle of a mix. And we're paying in, paying attention to that as we'll go over this now. I'll just like to basically talk about the use of the up faders. Now, the most basic form of mixing, of course, is to use just the up faders or the crossfader. Um, and no rotaries and blend obviously I've got one hand because of the other hands holding this camera and blend one track into the one track and mix the other one out blend the other one in and the other one out and it's the same with the crossfader automatically on the, the set curve there and that's the basic kind of mixing now you don't if two we, we've already gone over harmony and we hope we're putting that into practice if we can. If not, and you're still no good at that kind of thing, um, but you've got two tracks that you've been practicing around with and you know they fit together well, um, then of course you can try it with that. But when it comes to harmony, two tracks that are in a good harmony with each other, you shouldn't really need to use the rotaries or the low rotaries, especially. You should be able to compensate using more of the outgoing track to blend the two tracks together. Now uh, something that was well was a big uh, thing between newbies that come into DJing was the bass swap. What that involves is swapping bass lines between two tracks. Obviously you do that with Rotaries, the low rotaries or kills, either kill buttons or kill switches 
you don't really need buttons or switches but sometimes they they allow you to set your rotary and leave it as it is but you can still kill everything in just a flick of, uh, of a switch or a push of a button whilst leaving your rotaries wherever they are but they can give you more of an instant swap however the most basic way of swapping bass lines between two tracks is by killing all the bass the most of your range and swapping obviously like I say obviously I've got one hand holding the camera but you'd have when you're performing a bass swap you would have the incoming track's bass turned all the way down or as far as your your rotary allows it some have infinity a complete cut off some go down as far only as far as minus 12 decibels some go about 20 24 decibels so again it depends from mixer to mixer model and manufacturer to manu mixer manufacturer just how much cut you've got or kill you've got on your rotaries of course you'd have one hand on this rotary and your other hand would be on this rotary and you would swap them with both hands obviously I've got one hand holding the camera but you'd swap them in time right at the same point in time usually at the just at the start of the f of a, a bar or some musical um, correct well in in a musically correct uh, time hopefully so it doesn't sound out of place so say you'd count down eight bars at the start of the next bar you'd swap the bass lines over with two hands obviously one on each now the reason people do this is usually because the two tracks aren't in harmony and the bass lines clash but they can mix the beats together and they kind of fudge it by trying to kill as much of the bass as they can before swap so basically they they've tried to cut out as much as that that tone quality of the bass so the key isn't clashing as badly as it was before before swapping it so they're basically just using um, percussion and beats through the mid and the high range um, to mix with that's a good technique when you really can't get two tracks to fit together and the only thing you can do is to swap the the bass lines now I'll come again when it comes to harmonic mixing I said before that some people like to mix between root keys so between the major and minor key of the same note so say they like to mix between C minor and C major now you saw when on the previous video when I was showing you how to key your tracks with a keyboard that as soon as I put the major third in that it sounded wrong but when I put the minor third in it sounded okay now you're gonna get that when mixing major with minor of the same root note because that's how it sounded on the keyboard so that's why I didn't recommend it it will sound wrong but however when you're mixing um, if you're using just the beat section and the part where the bass lines come in now usually the bass lines on a lot of genres of dance music is basically the root note played in a certain pattern over and over again so obviously they're going to share the same note so that mix will sound okay now you won't even you, sh you might not even be able to uh, have to use the the low at all but as soon as any chord progressions or m any other musical aspects like a melody or a lead should we say comes into play then or a sequence you know something like a an an, an arp or something um, then you will have to make sure that you mix out whilst counting in time just in time before that next section starts and that's another thing with timing and knowing your tracks as well with the mix itself that even though we're going by phrasing 
we hope, what we mentioned before, that there's a lot of tracks that you aren't just going to fit together so they the they end the whole track ends you know fits nicely just as the next track goes into its breakdown like, like I showed you on the track sometimes you're going to have to blend and cut that track out musically in time and, and bring tracks in in certain places musically in time we'll, we'll cover that in a bit um, but yeah now most like I said you, if the tracks are, are in a good key and in perfect harmony together then you shouldn't really need to use the low however the the bass or the low range itself does kind of muddy the mix so what we generally try to do for most blends is we give it just a touch we don't go over the full kill because it can it can sound stupid especially when two tracks are of a decent key because it, it does take a lot of the balls away from a track uh, if you completely kill the bass, so we just give it a little, a little touch of the incoming track of, of, of bass muted out or cut, and then we bring the next track in, so we can so we can hear it, and then we'll grad we'll gradually kind of blend the bass if you know what I mean, or make minor, similar to the way we do. I mentioned the bass swap before minor adjustments you know with two hands at each time on both faders like I say again I've got the the camera in my hand so I can only show you with one but in time making the movements we're counting down our bars so we can do everything musically in time and we can but with both hands we can turn the faders and, and kind of like blending the bass some people like to blend the bass I personally think it's best to make, make your movements on in time so, uh, so like at the first bar, the fir uh, after eight, after eight bars, and the, do it again on the the start of the pick up of the next phrase, etc. And you can make little movements, but generally you just you're just smoothing over the uh, the muddiness of the mix, making sure there's no muddiness there. But some mixers out there don't have rotaries at all, and you can get away with just compensating, obviously, by moving more of the the outgoing track away with the up faders now obviously we're, we're keeping an eye on our master level so we don't peak in the middle of the mix again whilst doing that now when we do mix with our fa up faders and we bring the tracks in again we want to keep that that count uh, the musical time and the counting the bars and the beats and we want to move the track the same at, at the same kind of pace along with it the up faders um, so it's like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four. If we get that, so we can do everything in time, even moving the faders, and then while we're counting, we can through two, three, four, four, two, three, four. You know, and as you're still counting, to you know that that if you need to cut the track out that's already playing through through three, four and you can cut it out just in time for that to pick up onto the next track and it all sounds musically correct um, obviously when it comes to bringing the track in again we're counting down just as when we were releasing the record to the start of the bar so it's going hopefully it's still going round in your head from when you released it and beat matched it and you're counting the bars and the beats, so you'd be one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four, six, two, three, four, seven, two, three, four, eight, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, two, three, four, five, two, three, four. And then you've mixed it, you've brought the track in, you've opened the fader in time now a way to make sure to obviously it depends on the curve of your fader itself and how sharp that cut they cut in and out but sometimes it's best while you're counting if you can begin to move that fader in just before the count of the, that first beat that way then you get it in right in time to pick up right and right musically in time if you know what I'm trying to get at. So you'd be like one, two, three, four, two, two, three, four, three, two, three, four, four, 
two, three, four, one. And so you've already kind of in between the hit. Um, you you began to move, so there's no delay from your fingers. Sometimes that delay works because it's still in time if you do it bang on the beat. But obviously it's knowing the tracks and where, which tracks that kind of slight delay works well with. But usually if you just open it, because you're counting, you just open it in between those hits in the right place. Um, that's, gen that's generally a good idea because it starts bang on in time then. Um, use of the high sometimes it's a good idea if, you, if you've got a track that is very much mid to high in its in the way it's been mixed in, in its tonal quality you know mixed in the studio um, there's not much um, low to it but it's very high um, sometimes the outgoing track if you bring the some of the outgoing track high down as you start to move the up fader in obviously you'll have the the low down you'll be moving the up fader in of this incoming track and you'll be as well as moving this up fader a bit you can start to doubt some of the the high that can give that more track more of a presence um, especially if you've you've tried to smudge the the muddiness away by lowering the low. Now you don't always need to lower the low on an incoming track like I've said before sometimes you might find it really takes them like I said before takes the meat and two veg out of the if you want to call it that the body embodiment out of the track itself now when it comes to effects obviously you'll want to be doing that in time this is one's got um built in filter and obviously if you're counting down everything in time still properly in your head if you've lost the uh, the count because you, you I don't know if you're in a booth you've got to speak to someone who've got to stop and do something or stop and put um, something on record if you're mixing or, or something like that you can pick up the, the count again obviously before you use your effects and then you can one, two, three, four, two, two, three, and you know then you've got it in in time before you can then bring it back out, say at this, just before this, this the new phrase starts, you know where everything is. Um, so it's pretty much the same, just knowing, counting your time so everything's done properly. Um, Um, that's, bas that's basically it really is knowing your time when it comes to opening your faders moving your rotaries or swapping your bass lines so everything sounds like it's done perfectly like, um, like a production itself um, that's, ba that's, that's basically uh, it when it comes to the, um, the mix itself I don't know Okay, so if you want to perform the bass swap and you've only got one hand, uh, that can be done. Or if you have got two hands but you've obviously had to have one hand off the mixer because you've had to keep the two tracks in sync or make adjustments with the jog wheel or the pitch or on the record if you're using vinyl. Um, technically you've only got one hand, you've already opened the faders to the mix and you need to perform a bass swap, you need to do it with the one hand just the same as anybody that's only got one hand would. And, well it can be done and it can be done like this. It has to be done um, on the off beat um, as opposed to in time for the first beat of the first bar like usual. And the reason for this is because obviously the bass drum, is the kick drum is obviously known as the bass drum um, rather and obviously the low or the bass rotary affects that and is noticeable and it's noticeable noticeable to the dance floor as well because they can feel you take that away 
so it's best to do it on the offbeat where the snare is or the, the clap so instead of going dump 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 with a kick it's best for you to do it on the offbeat where the the clap is with no bass it's more mid range so basically so you'd be going kick clap kick so you want to do it on the clap or the snare so kick snare kick snare kick is how you your basic um, pattern will play or kick clap kick if they're using a clap instead it's the same thing it's the same um, place where we want to do it on that clap or the snare the off beat as it's otherwise known so so it's more kick so we're going to be well we're going to be taking it away on the so it would be this one so it would be kick clap kick so it's in time to come back into the bass to kick okay so it's the one that we the one again we do it the other way around now the one that we take in away so it's kick clap kick back the other way and that's how you can do it with one hand so it's unnoticeable that you take the bass away when it's only the mid-ranged part that's playing the snare or the clap and you put the bass on the next track back in in time for the, the third which is the kick straight after the offbeat again and that's how you can do it with the bass swap with one hand